Hello everyone, this is Steel with Studio Blue, and today we're going to cover lighting and shadows on interior uh, maps. Now this is going to be a little different than what we did for exterior maps, so uh, just follow along. Uh, first thing you want to do is make sure you have your map ready and completed. You want to have all of your furniture and all of your clutter and everything placed. Uh, please note that in this map we're going to have several additional light sources outside of the light from the windows. That is going to be important in just a few minutes. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we want to do is create a layer group. And we want to call that light. And we want to make sure it's on the top of everything else. Then we're going to create a new layer inside that group and we're going to call it sunlight. In this scene the sunlight is going to be stronger than the artificial light sources. So it's going to get its own layer and going to be a little stronger than the outside lights, the interior light sources. So now that we have this layer created, we're going to go ahead and grab the polygon marquee tool and we're going to start outlining from the top area where the light hits. Now note when it hits this bookcase, uh, actually before we go into that, let me tell you a little bit about how light works. Uh, the direction of your light, the light source, is the most important thing when you're doing an interior scene as it's going to dictate where all of your shadows fall. So a little bit of pre-planning when you're creating your map goes a long way. Uh, in this particular instance, uh, you can see the light rays are going to come in in this direction and coat this area of the, of the map leaving this area right here and this area right here mostly in shadow. Now that doesn't take into account the lamps, which we're going to do those separately in just a minute. So let's go ahead and bring it here to the bookcase. And we'll kind of do that and come over here and bring it to about, about there. Yeah, that's good. Then we're going to bring it up here uh, bring it a little further in. Yeah, we'll just do the whole thing. There we go. This is taking into account both light sources. Come here. Here. Here, and then we're going to kind of curve inward a little bit so that we're ignoring parts of the curtain. Come here. Come to about about there. That's fine. Kind of trace along here. And then come to about here. To about there. And then we just finish it up. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim off these little horns right here because it's going to look a little too fake. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the marquee tool and trim that off there. And that should give us a good start. I might want to trim this area off too. Let's go ahead and trim that off as well. That way what we're doing is we're kind of using the window as a sort of a guide for the light beams coming in from the outside. There we go. Okay, so now that we have this, this is going to be our main light beam coming in from the outside. We're going to look and we're going to see what areas are going to be stopped completely by the furniture. And it's going to be this area here, this area here, and these two areas. So we're going to actually kind of carve those out. Yeah, that'll work. And then this area here.
So what you can see what I'm doing is I'm actually just carving out where the light's going to get blocked by the furniture. And this will help when we're setting up our shadows later. Let's see. Oops, well, a little too a little too shallow in there. And this one here. This right here. That didn't work out. Let's try that again. You don't have to be perfect because you're going to be uh, using attenuation with the light tool anyway. Uh, feathering, uh, if you're familiar with that term with the, the other tutorials that I've done. So you don't have to be exact, you just have to be close. Let's see. And we have to make this a little bit more uniform. Let's add a little bit to that. There we go. So it's a little straighter. Let's see, just follow along. Don't worry about the lamps because the lamps aren't going to offer that much shadow. Cut out the whole lamp, the whole uh, whole lamp. We need to cut out the whole. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, there we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that'll work. And now the chair. That's a little too deep. Try again. There we go. Okay, so now we have where our light's gonna touch uh, pretty much from the outside. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to make sure that our color is set to what the sunlight is. And for those of you who remember from our last tutorial, I use F7FFC2, which I'm already set to. Then we choose the paint tool. We go to select, modify, feather, have it at 20 pixels, and then paint. And of course, it's bright as almighty and it looks absolutely terrible, but we're gonna go ahead and fix that in a second. We're gonna then lower the opacity for the light down to 35%. So now it looks like the light's casting into the room and stopping at the shadows. We haven't made the shadows yet, we've just made part of the light. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to make the artificial lights. So we wanna make a new layer we want to call this layer uh, inside lights. And we want to make sure it's underneath sunlight. Same layer, but underneath sunlight. We can hide the sunlight for now. Then we want to go here. We want to select the elliptical tool. And what we want to do is we want to hold down Alt and Shift. Go to the center area of where you want the light to come out from and then make a little circle. It doesn't have to be very big. In fact, it's probably best that it's not very big. What did I do? What did I do? There we go. Okay, well that's a little confusing. All right, well we'll just go ahead and do one at a time. Uh, for some reason the controls aren't working the way they're supposed to. Actually, I can just do this. And then I can move it. That moves the whole thing. Well, that's a little embarrassing. All right, we'll try that again. 
Nope, doesn't want to work. Okay, we're just going to do it one at a time then. So we'll call this inside light one. And we'll just select the bucket, the fill bucket, attenuate to 20, and fill. And then for this one, because if you see how they overlap, it's going to create a brighter. We want to make this less bright than the sun. We want to bring the opacity down to 20. That's 200%, isn't it? Yeah, 20. There we go. So it's just a little bit of light. As a matter of fact, what we can do to make this real easy is we can just duplicate and bring it in. Just duplicate it and keep bringing it to each one of the lamps. There we go. Now we have a little bit of work to do here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these layers down into one inside light layer. Call that inside lights. And then I'm going to take the marquee tool and I'm going to select the wall. Because as you can see, some of the light's bleeding into the wall and we don't want that. We want the light to actually stop at the wall like light would. And if you're having trouble with the placement, this is where you can bring your grid back and snap to your grid, but I'm eyeballing it and it's working it just fine. Okay, so there are the light from the lamps, and there's the light from the outside. Now we're going to go ahead and add the shadows, and the shadows are going to finish this up. Now there's two types of shadows that you can cast. One are the shadows that the player can move behind. Those work as part of your overlay. The other are shadows that the player does not walk behind. These are part of your ground. We're going to go ahead and we're going to differentiate between the two. So the first thing we want to do is we want to select this layer here, which is between our, this is our walls and our floor, and this is the layer with the furniture. We want to go ahead and go above that. We want to create a new layer group. We want to call this one Ground Shadows. Then we want to create a layer inside the ground shadows called ground shadows. And for this one, what you want to do is any, any area that is not, any, any object that's not really tall, like for example, these couches are going to cast a ground shadow, while anything really tall, like the walls and the bookcases here, are going to cast a shadow that the player can actually move behind. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create these ground shadows. And we're going to do that by, once again, selecting the Polygon tool. And we're going to select. Uh, you can, if you want to, you can bring your sunlight in as a guide, or you don't have to. It just really depends on whether or not you can operate with this in front of you and not distracting you. But we're going to create a series of polygon shapes based off of the furniture. And the shadows that it casts. And again, you don't have to be perfect because you're going to feather this like we feather everything else. Let's bring it to here. Yeah, that'll work. And you can always check it with your sunlight. If they overlap a little, that's okay. I'd rather it overlap a little than not overlap at all. I'm going to add some more in here. Let's see, this guy is going to cast a shadow to about here. This guy is going to cast a shadow to about here. And this shadow is going to be hardly noticeable, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. Actually, we can use the paintbrush for this one. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Or we could do this. That's no, not going to be notable if we do that. So we're going to paint that one in. 
and we're going to paint this corner in and paint this corner in as well. Um, so now we can go ahead and line it up again with the sunlight. Yep, that looks good. Go ahead and choose pure black as your paint. Go to select, modify, feather, 20, and paint. And of course that looks absolutely horrendous, but that's all right because now we're going to drop the opacity to 60%. There we go. So now we have an actual deep shadow here in the room that the sunlight doesn't reach. Now we're going to create the shadows that the player walks behind. And we're going to go ahead and again uh, go up here to right above, right below the light layer and right above the furniture and clutter layer. We're going to create a new group. I'm going to call this Sky Shadows. Then we're going to go ahead and create a new layer, and we're going to call this Sky Shadows, and I can't spell shadows for some reason. All right, and again, we're going to keep this as a guide. Now, I'm going to get rid of it. I don't need it, but uh, some people want to keep it as a guide. Go ahead and do that. Uh, and then you're going to go ahead and you're going to start at the top of the furniture that's casting this, the large shadows. And remember, these are going to be shadows the player is going to walk behind. In fact, let's just bring these up to the ceiling to be uniform. In fact, if we want to be real sneaky, we can bring them up here. And just trace along here. So we're going directly against... If you can see what we're doing, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and bring this in because this will look better in the long run. We can go ahead and create the shadows directly opposite of the light beam we created a little while ago. Again, don't have to be perfect. Uh, do make sure, and we are going to fix that, you don't actually want to get the wood grain in, but we're going to go ahead and fix that once we have everything uh, set. Okay, so now we're going to get rid of everything on the wood grain on the exterior portion of the map, the border of the map as it is. except for here. We're going to keep this area here shadowed because that's going to look really nice. All right, so go ahead and select your bucket again. Make sure we're at black. Make sure we modify 20% or 20 pixels. Paint and then change the opacity to 36%. There, now we have a shadowed room. We have sky shadows for the player to walk behind. We have ground shadows for the player to walk on. And we have these lights that will be lit up due to Kyle's overlay. Uh, as you can see right here, I will use that, here we go. See how the lamp itself has its own self shadow? Uh, Best example, best thing to do is to remove that when you're placing them. I'm going to have to go and I'm going to have to remove each one of these uh, in order to get rid of those self shadows because they wouldn't show up with the light shining directly down uh, upon the base of the lamp. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those, but that's going to take a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the video. Uh, at this point, what you would do is you would uh, get everything ready, create your overlay layer, and then import it into RPG Maker. So that's pretty much it. If you uh, like what you saw, lay a smack down on the like button below. Subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments. Connect us with over Facebook or Twitter, and we'll see you in the next video.